things you have. Uh, Samuel, I hope you are doing well. By God's grace, how about you? I'm good, I'm good. It's always a pleasure to have you on the set. No, I'm not good the camera. <laughs> okay uh, let's let's um before we come to the petition like we do always um we have the ndc suspending kuku anidoku i don't know if you have a link to that but just one or two minutes do you think they made the right decision <laughs> okay um good morning once again to your mm. listeners and viewers uh, once again i don't take it lightly at all i mean giving such an opportunity to also contribute uh, to national discourse okay. um like you rightly said whether or not it is right i think that one of the things we must speak mm. as uh, a people is that when you subscribe to the tenets of a party when you subscribe to the philosophy of a party you must be mindful that the sex of subscription is, is binding on you mm. and that this every party or every organization is led by constitution and so when you find yourself foul then the law will take its course what we witnessed i think a few days ago has to do with the misbehavior of a senior uh, political colleague in the party okay and a senior member let me use the word and the fact is that even before the disciplinary committee will sit and adjudicate on that uh, evidences that were shown through the the petition is well enough to suspend him pending i mean the meeting okay. and so that was what happened and i think that the party uh would have had a look at that before taking such a vital decision this was a deputy general secretary of the and also the former presidential aide of his excellency john akamels okay. and so he's not any uh, usual or normal person within the party he's a stalwart of the party okay very well um another issue we've got to look at has to do with the vetting of uh, ministers designated for various positions mm. we had the health as well as the Secu national security ministers appear before the vetting committee yesterday or committee yesterday what do you make of their performances as well as questions from the vetting panel yes i think that uh, let me start with the minister for uh, health i think he began before uh honorable kandapa came in uh the minister of health was confronted with some questions especially from uh mp for asuna asuna for south mm. I'm right, uh, Eric Opoku. Okay, I mean, uh, and people took so much interest in that because uh, he asked him how many district hospitals this government had put up and all of that in the last four years. And he said there were polyclinic and health centers. And he said that I, I was insisting on, I mean, district hospitals are not health centers. And so you realize that the, the line of questioning, especially I listened to uh mp for Madina francis so who also came out with issues of um land around the is that yeah if i realize from the pantan area and the, the man gave access to that but i think that it has been it has been i mean a usual kind of uh answering pattern if i would say from uh at my main because i watched his performance last four years I think that I've not seen any improvement, to be frank with you. Mm. <laughs> I have not seen any improvement in respect of how he's an he answered the questions yesterday. Uh, coming to the National Security Minister, who, I mean, people also took interest in, I mean, uh, because of what happened some time ago in the expo uh, leak, said that a young lady sent out and all of that, people were so interested in what was going to happen at the veteran uh, ground okay. and we realized that i mean he also he described to me appreciably uh, some knowledge in terms of security uh, irrespective of the fact that he was i mean uh, caught up in some issues last four years as a national security minister i think that he had some of these tips i mean uh, at his fingertips 
and there were there were instances where he also had issues as well i mean but all in all i think that kandapa didn't do well uh, didn't do bad at all uh he he, he also he answered the questions that i mean they were closed at him okay yeah. okay so if you were part of the panel you would probably have considered kandapa over um ajima menu if i were you see okay let me be first to add that ajima menu was confronted with a um, a situation uh, of a pandemic mm. last year mm. and uh, Adiman Menu, as he said, he, he wasn't accountable to me, I, I mean, he wasn't accountable when he came for the victim. He wasn't accountable to the victim committee, the appointments committee, he wasn't accountable to the people of Ghana. And so I think that, to me, I would prefer Kandapa uh, to him. I mean, Kandapa had his, had his short, uh, shortfalls uh, however, I mean, issues of security are very technical. They are not as, um, I mean, issues of environment and mm -hmm. science and all of that, where mostly we are abreast of the yeah. issues, I mean, that happen day in and day out. Mm -hmm. But uh, issues of security has to do with expertise and, I mean... And taking knee-jerk decisions. Mm -hmm. Sorry? I said taking knee-jerk decisions. Exactly, knee-jerk decisions. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. I mean, so... I, I think that he was a bit ahead of okay. um, Mr. Ajima Minu. He, he performed, I mean, better than Ajima Minu. But what I saw, mm. yeah, what I saw yesterday. All right, very well. Mm. We mostly want you to touch on that because you are also part of uh, <laughs> Ghana anyway. So you have your say on yeah. this issue. Yeah, very grateful. Sure, sure, sure. Very important. Now let's look at the election petition. Um, yeah. On Monday, Mr. No, no, Mensara is it Robert Metal? No, no, yeah, Mr. Ro Robert. Rojo. 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 yes, Rojo, Rojo. Yes, he appeared and got to end his as well. So, officially, the petitioners brought their case to, to, to an end. Let's look at that day. What transpired before we get to Tuesday? Okay, all right. So, on Monday, mm. council for first respondent and council for second respondent took their turns to uh, cross examine. Mr. Robert Rojo Metal Nino. Mm. Uh, he is a former health minister and also a senior party member. And as we saw in the vet, uh, the cross examination, and even in his witness statement, he said that clearly since 1992 he has been at the helm of affairs when it comes to the strong room. And so by far, he's the most experienced person anyone can think of when it comes to electoral processes. Uh, relative to activities that goes that go on in the strong room and so uh many questions came up uh, but if i am in a position to also i mean make my individual remarks then i'll i'll say that he discharged his duties meticulously especially at a point where he said that if not for his maturity this country could have been in flames. This country, I mean, would have been in a very distasteful um, position. And that is what we should be looking at for. I realize that the people within his own political party are throwing jabs at him and are, I mean, blaming him here and there. But the truth is that, as he explained, these issues normally come up especially in coalition of, uh, coalition of results. And this is not the first time he, he left the strong room in any elect electoral process. He has done that thing. This is not the first time he mistakenly signed on peace um, coalition sheets. He has done that, I mean, previously, and he had asked for leave from the EC commissioner to correct them, which he cited as a classic example in the case. And so... The, the, the NDC and its supporters must be very careful, especially with the, the commentary they run in relation to how he handled and I mean he handled himself in the strong room. I think that he discharged his duty, his duties very well, and the manner in which he I mean answered the first and second respondents was off point. He perfectly I mean gave them the answers that were deserving of the questions he, he, he was told. Uh, and that is exactly what we should be taught now. But, and not the fact that he went and he took tea uh, at the EC's, uh, the 
the EC commissioners yeah. office and not uh, I mean this and wasn't given the whole biscuits of, and all that exactly those things are not part, they are not material in what we are talking about I mean we are looking at how that the EC conducted itself as and the EC's chairperson as the only con, con, uh, returning officer conducted herself was it in line with the provisions in the constitution was it in line with I mean, TI 127, that, I mean, from the elections of 2020, did she ask a good faith? These are questions we should be posing at her. And not the fact that someone had to leave the strong room with his colleague, knowing that they don't trust the easy. I mean, these are just, I mean, how a layman will think, which is understandable. Okay. But when it comes to matters of the law, it goes beyond that. And I think that the NDC must check, I mean, cautiously, especially when they are talking in relation to these two gentlemen. Okay. Was, it, other, yeah. was it important for the NDC to have brought Mr. Rojo Metal Nuno after they had had two witnesses already? What, impo what, what vital point did he add to what the previous witnesses ha had done? It was, it, was, it, was, it was more than important because when Dr. Kwesa White mounted the witness box, you realize that there was a question that persisted. The question was that were you did you have did you did you did you have any direct conversation with the EC chairperson? He says no. I mean I took uh, that information from the lead. Okay. Uh, who, who, who who was uh, in the person of Roger Metronomo. Okay. And so when Rojo came in, you realize that the que that question at least that, that question was nowhere to be found. And so it came I mean he came to strengthen the position of Dr. Peter White. Mm. He, I mean, because they realized that if you listen to Kojo Paul Kuma, he said that if Rojo bound the witness box, he would commit perjury because he came out with lies and swore to affidavit disposing what were not true. But when he mounted the witness box, the whole narrative changed. And they just tried to, I mean, cast that kind of expression on him and kind of credibility crisis in the in the in the in the manner that is very distasteful that he went to take tea and left his job and all of that i mean so i think that bringing Jojo metunumi into the witness box was to further strengthen the the the, the, the testimony that was given by dr pesa okay then fast okay so they eventually brought their case to an end on that very monday yeah that the, the petitioners then we had the first and the second respondents also saying they had also brought their case to an end hence they were not going to present anybody to be cross-examined um, that case was also deliberated on on tuesday what transpired on tuesday okay so i mean that was a very interesting day mm. uh witnessed where i mean councils were given the opportunity to make their case mm. uh the petitioner and his a lawyer led by I mean that uh, came out strongly that uh, there was an operational way that they should take judicial notice of which was um, the word election or elected yeah. and that the EC chair person Madame Jane Aduki Spencer had elected to give evidence by way of the witness statement and the other hand uh, the other side of it the first Respondent lawyer also mounted the serious argument that it wasn't sufficient that putting, looking at the, the, the laws and the CIs, he came out with the position that he couldn't force a witness into the witness, but especially he decides to withdraw, uh, to give testimony. Then PP also, I mean, had to associate with that which um, the, the lawyer for first response had said, also said that it wasn't necessary for them to use evidence and so there was no need to push a witness in the witness box and you realize that the oppositions were born out of the fact that the NDC had not discharged their burden of food and so uh, there was no need I mean to even go ahead and so they decided to close their case as well but that is a bit worrying you don't do this especially in crucial cases we are witnessing today this is a crucial matter this is a presidential petition one of its kind we mean we know very well that 2006 is witness one but this one comes in its own kind of um in a law that it is uh so generic it's one of its kind 
I mean, to have that, that, um, that, that temerity to say that I'm not going to, I mean, I give evidence, that is very powerful. That is extremely powerful. And you could hear from them when they said that they will take the, I mean, the rigs, uh, they, they intend to swallow whatever comes at them. And uh, I don't know. And this morning, the ruling was given. And the ruling, I mean, stated that they were not going to, the judges, the learned judges said they were not going to uh, be, be, be um, they are not convinced, and that the invitation that was extended to them by lawyer for the petitioner would, in fact, be rejected. And what happened? So, what it means is that Madame Jane Adikwe Mensa may not the basis of this mount the witness box. However, lawyer for petitioner also rose up and, I mean, said he was opening his case again. She got out this morning said he was going to open his case and that he was going to file an application to not the woman to mount the witness box. And so I said he's taking a different turn again. Mm. And as I said initially, we cannot predict the direction of this case unless it is over. Samuel, I, I, in literature, we're told that re repetitions are meant to lay emphasis on an issue. So I, I want you to kindly repeat what transpired today again for the purpose of those who did not have the chance to watch. And we do it yeah, on I mean, TV at uh, the moment. Yes. Yeah. So what happened was that yeah. the learned judges came and read a whole judgment, mm. a very long, uh, lengthy judgment. Okay. And um, the reason for that was that they, tend, uh, they intended to explain that okay. you one could not be forced into the witness box and that the the powers that were given to them were limited powers especially in matters of such and they do not intend to um go beyond their powers and the only limit they could be uh, held to was the position of the law and okay. so by virtue of that they decided that the invitation that lawyer for uh, petitioners or petitioner was extending uh it went rejected. They were not going to accept that invitation, and so they had to let go of the, that invitation. So, uh, like I said, mm. the position on the basis of that, the position that the judges took, men, lawyer, sorry, first, first respondent, mm. um, chairman for chairperson for first respondent, was not going to man the witness box. And lawyer Katushkata rose up, and then he opened the case. We opened, he, he, he pled with the court that he wanted to open the case and that um, he intended to file an application, subpoena the woman and get her cross-examined. Now, that is not going to um, mean that the woman is going to serve as a witness for the first woman because if she's subpoenaed, she's not going to be the, a witness. She's, her witness statement has been struck out and she will come to give material, I mean, information that is relevant to the determination of the case. That is the reason why people are subpoenaed in both civil and criminal matters. Okay, okay. So what, what should we expect in the coming days? Well, I expect that, I, okay, I don't want to be ahead of the judges. Sure. I cannot uh, say whether or not the judges will uphold that subpoena of information. But if that should happen, then we should expect interesting days ahead. Okay. But if they do not accept that, then they will just give directions to both parties as to how the trial will, will, will proceed. And I think that will not be far from um, the end of the case. All right. Samuel Mahama, we are grateful for your time, as usual. Most grateful, sir. All right. So that was Samuel Mahama, legal analyst, bringing up to speed what's been happening regarding the election petition so far. So with the information we are gathering and so the application